That was for the prior, wasn't that the prior? Okay. For the prior month? Okay. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for the uh, August 2nd, 2017 Airport Commission meeting minutes. Thanks. There's, I had heard yesterday, I think it was Chad is it Hanson? What's your, Chad, Chad is here for a, a hangar approval or hangar plans. Your last name? Walker Storfer. Walker sorry. We have a motion, but we do not have a second for the approval of the minutes. I will second that. Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Anything from SCH? Nobody here. So. Brings us down to item number four, storm drain concerns. Sam, were you able to get any bids or anything? We didn't get any numbers together because it's to me it, you're going to have to look at a couple of different options or uh, the only place you could put that any kind of a swale or a drain or anything like that you'd have to go right over the top of the existing storm sewer there. My thought was that you'd probably have to dig some kind of a trench and then fill it with rock and pipe or something so the water can so you don't wash away from that drain. So we didn't get any numbers on it. I um, jo uh, Jeremy and I looked at it a little bit, but there are some issues there with um, utilities and you know electric and that kind of thing. Not, you have to worry about the sewer and water, but you have to worry about the electric and other well, stuff. Well, we're, the, we're only talking; it's only got to down, go down what twelve inches, maybe total from. Well, I think it'd have to go more than that. Oh, really? Oh boy! I think it would. I mean, you just got to present the drain there, I mean, twelve inches over what twenty okay. foot span. How, how far is well, it between most of those buildings? I don't know what it is between the hangers. I didn't measure that, but you got to have you got a room there, and if you you got to have it. If you're going to do that, you got to have it so you can mow it. You know, slope. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, a, a foot, you know, from in 20 I, feet. I mean, you should, that's still very mowable. Well, that is, think. yeah. But I I, th I don't think you can do it with a foot. I really don't. But that's just you know we'd have to have somebody really. I mean, it's we we're talking about water going down this thing once every. You know, eight years or so, probably. I would well, assume. That's been <laughs> twice this year already. Yeah. So. Um, one flooded twice this yep, year. Yep. Twice this year at least. Yeah. So, you know, we can. Um, I don't have the, the all the numbers that's going to take to get it done. Let's put it that way. Uh, we just kind of looked at it and discussed it, and and uh, probably have to talk to the engineers about it to make sure there's not an issue there. But it's doable, it's certainly doable. But the next question is, who's going to pay for it? That's right. So those are always concerns. Well, as far as paying for it, it'd have to come out of the airport fund, I would assume. Um, we've got to somehow try to get some numbers together whether, I mean, how beneficial would it be if we were to cut that grade down about 12 inches in the center without going, you know, Hauling in a bunch of rock, just cut it, regrade it, sand, uh, seed it. I would certainly <clears throat> think that that would. Well, either way, it's going to help the problem. Either way, it takes a certain amount of time and effort to do that because you're going to be hauling dirt out and you're going to be hauling dirt back in yeah. to some degree because you got to have some kind of topsoil in there. Um, yeah, that, so those are just a couple suggestions I had about. Should we ask SEH to prepare some numbers? They've been asked. Yeah, I'm, I'll, you know, I, I've been talking to Ryan about it. We just haven't had a chance to get together out there either. And so, we'll see what he has to say about it. Okay. Well, should we put that back on next month's agenda? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Then, I'll try to get some numbers for you then. Okay. Item number five: airport budget. Aaron, I guess this is where we'll have you help step in. Uh, Chair, members, commission. I uh, presented a copy of the budget to you via email yesterday and so the council right now is going through the budget process they ultimately are targeting adoption sometime uh, toward the end of the year here at the first meeting in December 
<clears throat> I guess the easiest way to look at it is to uh, uh, look at page two, uh, starting there. And I have it up on the screen as well here, if you like. You know, on the revenue side of things, a uh, couple of things to note. Uh, our operating uh, grant has been finalized with MnDOT Aeronautics for the next two um, cycles. And so that did increase, you know, based on the paving of the runway to 18,000, which is a little bit more than what we did have projected in our estimates, so that, that's good. Um, I did reduce the uh, airport AV gas sales uh, down to 45,000. Um, you know, the spread on cost of fuel and, and, uh, and sale of fuel, you know, is, you know, it, it's an impact, but it's not as big of an impact as maybe that would indicate just you know, given that we only make so much on the sale of fuel, but uh, and it, that can vary highly, of course, when the skydive operations are out there. I mean, that's more significant. Uh, if you get additional traffic, that can change too. And so uh, that, that's a variable item, but I did reduce that just uh, more or less based on this year's number uh, back from 2016 actuals. Uh, you know, that's about where we came in, so. Uh, Looking at uh, hangar rent, you know, kind of roughly, uh, you know, 30,000 or so there. Uh, and uh, that's also, you know, looking at the potential for some of the egg rent to, to de decline over time. Uh, then the, the expenditures, you know, given some of the time, uh, we have been, t you know, tracking time we have looked at an adjustment uh, to the uh, the maintenance allocation from Public Works um, in terms of the FTE allocation to the airport. So that's a that's an adjustment. We're on page four now. Here uh, again, budgeted uh, budgeted expense for fuel down there. So you can kind of see the spread. Uh, nothing really material. You know, it's changed in this next section. And repair and maintenance, you know, a couple of those items, you know, just really gone up slightly. Those are pretty discretionary items, just kind of depends on what comes up in a given year. And then uh, probably the notable item in here is um, we, in the 17 budget, we have $17,000 um, that is going into a pavement uh, reserve. So the for the future milling overlays and seal coatings and things like that for the uh, paved runway. So there is budgeted funds that would likely uh, match, you know, MnDOT cost participation for those items. Uh, there is also a portion of a, a ground master mower for public works that, uh, the, that's the difference between the 32 and the 17. So then that 32, there is 17,000 for the 18 pavement reserve, and then also a portion of a Groundmaster mower. Um, given the way the airport now is laid out and configured and sloped, it's just going to be a little bit different of an animal to, to mow. Um, so that's a discussion item at the council for the general fund as well. <clears throat> um, but it would have utility at the airport also. So on net, um, I guess you can kind of go back up to this uh, on page one where you have more of the, uh, the summary, you know, revenues are, are down a little bit. Um, and we do actually, based on this particular budget, most notably again for the capital purchase, which isn't something we do year to year, um, this represents a drawdown of fund balance of $8,209. Um, so you are just a little bit out of balance as far as the budget is concerned. Um, but again, you have a one-time capital situation there. So I guess with that, you can see uh, fund balance uh, right now uh, in 17 is 134,000. With this budget, you know, of course, I'll bring that back to 126, 139. So happy to answer any questions you have. Otherwise, you know, ultimately, probably in the next month or two, you'd be looking for the airport commission to uh, recommend a budget for the city council. What's the $80,000 uh, item in there, page one? <clears throat> so um, this, uh, when, when we did the uh, paving of the runway, 
Uh, there was a $150,000 contribution to that project. 80,000 of that was a one-time drawdown of fund balance. Um, so that's the 80,000 that you see in the, uh, the 16 category here. And then the balance, that other 70,000 is uh, being paid back over time to the construction account. That was 150,000 that the city contributed you're talking about? Um, so the local share, well, the original notion of the local share on the project was 300,000. Uh, there was a $150,000 general fund contribution and then a $115,000 airport fund contribution. The first 80,000 of that was made with a drawdown of fund balance and that's what that, that operating transfer out represents there. You talked last month about with that 131 of, of drawing down the rest of that and getting it done with. You know, certainly uh, you, you have 100, uh, based on this budget, you'd have 126,000 um, available. Uh, one, of the, one of the qualifications that I did mention, you know, at that time was, before you had discussion on that, was the resolution of the um, MnDOT um, contribution to the overage on the project. And I think I had emailed out to the commission, but uh, we did receive word back from MnDOT on their level of participation with that. And they're not going to cover the entire amount. And so um, what we're doing there, and you know, that's relatively new information. Uh, what we're doing there is uh, based on our compromise agreement, I think we called it, with SEH at the time. Uh, we indicated that they would pay the local share of what was the projected overage was going to be, and they did do that. It was like 70 or so thousand dollars. And then uh, we still had 700 some thousand dollars outstanding. I'm just gonna be using real round numbers here. Um, MnDOT is, uh, you know, based on their contribution, just roughly th that'll leave us still $400,000 unaccounted for. And uh, we'll be, you know, sitting down. We've requested a meeting with SEH based on our compromise agreement to discuss how that gets paid, um, whether we make a claim on the errors and omissions insurance. We have a mutual resolution to the issue. Um, however, we might proceed. So in our compromise agreement, we have 60 days to have that meeting. The meeting's been requested. Uh, we've also uh, had meetings with our legislative delegation just to connect with them just to see if MnDOT can have any additional reconsideration of their position on the issue. Um, don't know if that'll happen or not, but you know, I think we're obligated to pursue that. Um, do you have a meeting date? We do not. So the last, uh, I requested it and Joel said he'll get back to us on that. My question is why, <clears throat> why this stuff wasn't brought up to the airport commission before, before it became an issue where we could have stopped it and started over again? You know, this thing, uh, nobody knew about this thing until it was already done. And so somebody came along and said, yep, just go ahead and do it. Well, we're talking about $800,000 here. And it's, so it's, uh, to me, uh, not being involved with that, uh, at least having an opinion on that thing, as far as the airport com commission is concerned, upsets me. Yeah. Because we, the whole thing should have been stopped as soon as they found that out. And the day they found that out was when they were done with the taxiway. Yeah. So we should have stopped it, could have reconfigured it and start over again. I think so. that's certainly a, you know, a good question and uh, certainly something that uh, we've talked about before in terms of you know, what, why, did, why didn't that happen? So I think we Yeah, I mean, so who knew it and when did they know it? That's right. really the question. Yeah, yeah I, and uh, you know, that's certainly something that we're gonna have to kind because of work if, through the process. Because if SEH doesn't step up to the plate here, the city's out $500,000. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's upsetting because I got to an answer to the taxpayers sitting up here, the council member. Right. So if somebody here knew about this and didn't bring it to forward to the uh, airport commission, that's going to irk me. Yeah. Well, I can uh, I can give you some degree of assurance here that um, the problem and the scope and the magnitude of the problem, you know, at least from my perspective, was was not known, you know, at any early form of the construction, and so. Uh, there was a lot of interaction between SEH and Dressel. Um, 
the only real interaction we had with it, you know, at least as far as I'm aware, and when I'll say what I had with it, um, was that uh, they asked to utilize that, that dirt pile, which we said fine, that we were looking to get rid of that anyways. Um, but um, there was no, ever, no, never any indication that, um, you know, this was the type of issue that was going to, you know, be in excess of the contingency that we had budgeted in the project. That was never brought forward as an issue um, or discussed in, in that regard with us. Um, well, when we have a contract, I, as I understand, the city had a contract that allowed this, like the state to go 15% over what was bid. And so how did it ever get approved over that? I mean, how could we expect the state to pay more than that 15%? Because that's what their contract said, as I understood it. You know, that was uh, referenced as their, their standard policy. Um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, this is a miss all around, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a very unfortunate situation. Um, there, there clearly was an error made in the projections for the, the amount of fill needed to uh, do the project. Um, SEH's voluntarily, you know, payment of the projected local share on the initial end, I think. So it, they paid that other part of the 150 that you're charging the hangar owners to? Um, no, that, that's a distinct issue. You don't think about anybody else. Um, so from that perspective, though, it, it, these are all material facts uh, that we'll have to evaluate and, and determine, you know, going forward. And, and there potentially is litigation, you know, that we'll have to engage with on the issue to get where we need to be. Uh, or, you know, in the ideal world, we, of course, would, uh, you know, get this resolved on a voluntary basis. I'm just sorry the airport commission was not part of that conversation. I think everybody's sorry they weren't part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. it was asinine. Okay, any other discussion on the budget? Gentlemen? No, Rick, did you have anything? No, I don't have anything. <clears throat> Why are the ag revenues estimated to go down? Are we losing ag land, or are we just charging less for the land we have, or why, why is that? So we, we are losing acreage. Uh, we lost acreage as a result of the paving project. Uh, so that, <clears throat> you know, that is starting to accrue. Um, within that, there's also the uncertain nature of whatever revenue we were going to continue to get under the forest land nursery, you know, lease revenue that we get on a monthly basis. Uh, you're losing a little bit of additional uh, acreage with the Fenway and Headwaters Parkway Roundabout project, you know, that kind of slightly moved into some area that had previously been leased. And so, uh, but the biggest one is definitely some of the inaccessible areas as a result of the paving project. Yeah. The other thing that never gets counted though, Aaron, never gets counted is every time we build a new hangar out there, there's more income from taxes. Yeah. And that's never part of this budget. It's never mentioned. You know, we pay into the school taxes, we pay into the city taxes, we pay into all of it, and it just never is part of the total budget. So, yeah, there's going to be some uh, ag leases going down, but I think there should be more credit given to the folks that are putting outlay of money over there. Is there any way to do that? I mean, you know, I, that's I think a, that's a valid point. That's a, uh, that's a real estate tax issue, and so, you know, of course you have your lease for the use of the ground lease and the property. Um, which is, you know, that accrues specifically to airport operations. Um, the, the other is uh, no different than when I build my house. You know, I don't get to dedicate, you know, my taxes to my neighborhood or to my particular interest. It's aggregated in with the overall tax base and then allocated, you know, accordingly, however the jurisdictions would like to do that. So, you know, that, that's the way it's treated. Um, so... You know, it's a policy thing. I mean, if, if the way that would be resolved, if the, the council was inclined, I mean, they, would, they could authorize a transfer from the general fund, you know, to reflect that. But like I said, I think, you know, there's kind of a question on where that starts and stops. You know, Walmart pays a lot of taxes. Do they dedicate specifically to issues associated with Walmart or does it go into the general, you know, taxes and dis be distributed based on the policy priorities of the council? But we're still seeing the, the revenues from the land lease coming into the airport. Oh, well, of course. No, but, but 
those leases are going down. That's the thing. You know, and some of it's due to the fact that, you know, we're, there's more building going on out there and that kind of thing too. Um, so, anyways, it, it, I, I understand the problem with uh, trying to reallocate that money, but it just seems like we never get the credit for doing what we're doing out there. There's some, you know. Yeah, even if the money wasn't allocated, but we just had a figure, our airport provides X amount of dollars in property tax income, you know, from the hangars. I, I'm not caring where it goes. It just has to be in front of the council and say, look, here's, here's all these buildings going up. Here's the number that they're generating. Look how the city is benefiting from I this. I think that's certainly doable. Yeah. Okay. Item number six. Uh, recent airport open house, uh, Young Eagle, Eagles event. John, do you want to recap that? Um, we had an event, and people flew, and we had 170 kids fly, uh, get rides from 10 volunteer pilots. Um, I think we generated some goodwill. We didn't have any disasters or accidents, to the best of my knowledge. Everybody had a pretty good time. We had food. Um, I would not leave. I think S Rick also did. I don't know if you did or not, but I would not stop flying until the last kid flew. Right. And that was it. And if that, and I announced that to the crowd. I said, I'm not going to stop flying until the last kid flies. And we flew until 5 o'clock and um, had a pretty good time. We had to change runways halfway through. That went pretty well. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it was a crosswind then for a while. Which way are we going to land? And finally, we changed runways. That worked out well. Um, I didn't hear any complaints. Um, there may have been some, but I didn't hear any. But I heard a lot of goodwill. And I think, um, frankly, I think the airport could use some goodwill. So we um, hopefully had a successful event. And hopefully, people are satisfied. We had Rick some... volunteered. You volunteered. A bunch of people volunteered. We had some. Great static uh, displays out there from the fire department, police department. We've had uh, a T-28 out there, some T-6s out there, several flyovers, you know, with the smoke, and I, it was it was a really good show. It was a great day. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was a great day. And the, the Lions were very pleased with, with the uh, turnout from the, from the uh, community. It was... The turnout was not as big as it had been in other years, but the number of kids flown and the, the sales generated were were equal to um, um, past years. So the, it was definitely a destination for community to come out and get their youth fly, you know, fly their youth and uh, enjoy the the food and the and, and treats that were available. So it, it was a great day. A lot of hard work by the volunteers to organize it and to uh, and, and to staff it that day, but. But it, it worked really well, and the CAP did a great job as, as well. Yes. Excellent job. Those young kids were really, really attentive all day. Um, we didn't get a chance to fly all of them because it, it got so late. Yeah. But uh, I, I took, got two of them. And I took uh, five or six of them, I yeah. think. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it was, all in all, it was a very good day. Yes, it was. <clears throat> so. Sidewalk. Okay. Um, Item number seven, we got the sidewalk repaired uh, when Pat Hoverland did his uh, apron out there. Uh, they went and jackhammered the chunk of sidewalk out by the AD building. It cost us, I believe, $125, which is very reasonable to have that done. I really appreciate Pat uh, getting involved with that one. How do we get payment for him, Aaron, on that deal? How do we get him paid? How do we get Pat paid on, on that $125? He's to submit an invoice to the city and we would pay off the invoice. Okay. Yeah. I'll get with him and get that done then. Um, but yeah, thank you, Pat, very much. Goose relocation program. Sam, have you done anything at all with yes, that? Yes, I have. Not <laughs> good. Thank you. Haven't shooting geese yet? No, we haven't because they, every time we've uh, had an opportunity to go out there, they're not there. Of course. I've been chasing them off the runway. Yeah. And we, we've been waiting for a federal permit, and that has not happened. So we're still going to use the same permit that we've been using year after year. And that uh, that just basically means that anything that happens out there, we've got to do it during season. And there's about a two-week season going on now, and then there's a gap, and then the season's open later. So um, 
that's going to be happening. We've been. Uh, well, we've got most of the geese that were there should start moving south by now, don't they? Oh, they no, start? they're late. Got a long ways to go yet. Yeah. yeah. Not as long as there's food. You're right. We're yeah. taking geese out there in December. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yeah. yeah. So that'll be an ongoing project for the fall. This is not getting around it. Eat them up. Well, you can eat them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, I've been I've been chasing them off the runway there too. So we want to, but they're never there when we can get a little bit organized. So but that that'll that'll change. I'm just going to write. This is going to be ongoing through December. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I don't think there is, is, does it seem to be more geese than in previous years? I don't no. think there is. I no. mean, it's. No, it's one group. There's about the, 100. The problem is, is that they got a resting place. They got water sure. there. They got cover there. Yeah. They got no reason to go back to the lake that night. No, that's, that's about it. Uh, they, but they're not there every day. So they're, they're, They are not there every night. No, absolutely not. Okay. Item number nine, hangar E, insurance claim, remaining life of building. Maybe, Aaron, you want to, is there anything that you can inject into this one? Yeah, um, Chair Members Commission, so we have uh, been, been working on this. Our original expectation was is that the insurance adjuster was going to come out, review the situation, and, you know, give us an adjustment, which would become a normal process. Um, he uh, kind of came back to us and said, uh, get an estimate uh, to fix the the work and or you know fix what you think needs to be done. Of course, you can imagine it's a little bit complicated because it's an older building and you know what's what's old, what's storm damage related, and all that. And so uh, we did get an estimate. Uh, we did forward that on to the uh, insurance trust to have them evaluate what uh, you know what what they're open to doing. And so. The estimate we received was on the order of about forty-four thousand uh, dollars to get the work done, and um, we'll we'll just see what the the league says as far as uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, and once we we hear that, we'll we'll try to connect, you know, with you folks and, and see what direction we want to go with things. That seems like a lot. Well, it sure does to me too. That we're seems like an it? awful lot. What yeah. do you want well, for that? Would, when we had talked to a contractor previously, they said there wasn't any rail systems available for the, you know, to repair the old rail system. Um, so they'd have to put up new doors and, and well, new rail systems. Um, but I haven't talked to this contractor at all. I, I do want to report that Doug Krause had called about a week after the last airport commission meeting, wondering if he and his um, uh, friend Tim could could help close up the, the, the far door where Samson's airplane is in and, and close up the hangar. Um, I had talked with, well, anyhow, we were in the process with the insurance and all that, and I said it would be best if we brought it to the airport commission and, and discussed it here. Um, I did go out there tonight, and I do see that the doors are back on on Samson's, and, and uh, I'd seen Jim Schultz out there, and they had helped repair his door as well. So the hangar is closed up, and they were able to find a way to repair the, the, the hangers that, that hold the, the, the rail system, the pipe, with the, for moving the doors. Well, the, uh, the scope is basically uh, fixed storm damage building 32, well, the sidewall, um, remove and replace damaged roofing. Uh, the difficulty is, is, you know, a lot of the roofing is in place, but it's been lifted, right? And so you're potentially in a situation where you're vulnerable to have that happen again unless you get it reattached in a way that you know makes sense. Uh, remove and replace skylights in existing locations. Uh, rebuild and replace storm damaged sliding doors on the southeast corner. Uh, fix miscellaneous damaged uh, wall wall steel. So I mean it's that's the uh, that's, that's one proposal. We we have another proposal um, that's a little bit lower than that. Um, however, there's a lot of a lot more time and materials built into that one. So you have like a fixed price of about $27,000, $28,000, if I remember correctly. But then there's a lot of hourly, and that's not actually, that one is like kind of puttying and filling a lot of the holes from where some of the, you know, the roofing lifted up versus, you know, putting in, you know, new roofing. So 
a little bit different scopes, but we just did a couple contractors, you know, walk it, look it, and uh, that was, I mean, we're in that range, you know, of 30 to 44 from both, so. Ron, was, was any work done on those doors for your hangar? No. Okay. And my doors are still functional at this point? Barely. So I'm just waiting to see, you know, if I have to go out there and re-nail the siding on the doors, I'll do that. If I have to reinforce the door, door joints, I'll do that. It doesn't take a whole lot. Right. Not 44. Have a hanger e, it just the hanger that it is, it, it provides something for somebody who wants to get yeah, into the line. We've always so we've I always repaired our own. Way, so I'm just yeah. What you guys want to do? When we were in there, we we, we always repaired the doors or whatever it took. You know, just did it, and uh, you know, I just exactly. Uh, it just seems to me that, like look, like for instance, Doug Krause, he did talk to me too about it. And, he asked about doing it. Of course you can. Go ahead and do it. Why not? But um, I don't know why we couldn't, instead of doing that, give these guys some consideration on the rent or something for what they're doing there. That's basically what it amounts to. You know? And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what it would take to get that nailed down up in the ceiling, but the damn thing's always leaked. You know, getting around that. It's about the leak. It's about the integrity of the doors and the siding. Yeah. yeah. We can deal with yeah. the leaks. Yeah. Yeah, the leaks don't, that's not the issue. And it's your door that's the integrity issue. It isn't all the doors. Well, I think my door certainly has integrity issues, but what it would take just to go down and put some 90 degree cross bracing in the joints and screw it in, it doesn't take a lot to give you some integrity. But we're kind of up in the air. We're, we're waiting to see what do you want us to do? What can we do? Um, you know, if another storm comes along, you know, if the siding gets dropped, ripped off, well then do I have an integrity issue with my, my plane? So I'd really like to try to address something to some degree out there in the work with the commission and well, I guess we'll have to find out exactly what the insurance company has to say about it and go from there, you know? Well, that's really where we're at. I mean, I, I had two contractors, or I had one, Rick, you had another contractor go out there, and they looked at the building. They didn't, they didn't want to have nothing to do with it, you know? Uh, just because it is in pretty pretty tough shape, so. But, but I, I think the thing you got to consider is exactly what it would cost to move everybody out of there. Well, There's some costs there too, yeah, and it's, I think it's, it's I think it's behoves the city to do something about it. So it, we got something down there. I think the honest assessment you have to go through is, uh, you know, is it worth fixing? Of course. What's your loss in rent? You know, in, in terms of, you know, that's obviously operating income. You know that you're dealing with. Yeah, but at the same time. We, you know, just forget about the storm. We've had a lot of service requests, you know, in the last year on that building uh, for any number of different issues prior to this, this particular event. And so, you know, is it, uh, is it exceeded its useful life? Is it worth fixing or not worth fixing? And that's an assessment we're going to have to do here. Okay. So at this point, uh, does the commission have any problem or does the city have any problem with these guys? going in and repairing? I, I think they need to get permission and approval from us first um, because, um, you know, and in, in our, you know, we need to evaluate it in terms of what uh, they're doing. It is our asset as a city. Um, it is a situation where, you know, we have liability situations to think about when people start doing work and, and things, and maybe we want them to do it, maybe we don't. You know, uh, it, but we need to be involved with that discussion for sure. Who would you like them to contact, I guess? Um, they can contact me and then, you know, I'll, I'll either have them work with Dave Adams or Dave Floor, depending on what uh, what the request is. But realistically, we're I think we're in status quo, uh, you know, mode until we f hear from the insurance company. So I don't anticipate we'd be authorizing any adjustments to the building until we make a determination on what it is we're going to do there. You know? okay. It's always been my desire that we well, to, to be able to retain hangar building E, since yes. it wasn't immediately in the, the, the right-of-way areas, um, it helped keep um, some hangars, some affordable hangars for, for some of the people that had rented, um, had been renting at the airport. Um, I, but at the same time, we know that it's a temporary facility, and I, I just hope that the storms that we've been having don't make it even more temporary. I mean, that's... With the age of the building, um, the, the storms have been causing a lot of havoc, and I, I just 
Um, anyhow, my point is, is that I'm glad we still have hangar building E. It helps bridge the gap between having um, the, the um, T hangars on the south end of the airport. And uh, I hope that the storms don't get stronger and just uh, take it away from us, you know, sooner than we want. But it is, in my <coughs> opinion, it was, um, it, it was considered a temporary structure. We just haven't defined, you know, how long of a, you know, how long temporary means. Well, at this point, we just wait and see what the insurance says, and we'll yes, have you, uh, yeah. whomever wants to repair their doors get in contact with you at this point, and we'll go from there. I, I think the, the, the structural problem that Ron has with the doors, I think we need to, um, they weren't blown off by the storm. They've been weak for a long time, and if there's a way we could at least get some bracing in there to and, and some of that skin nailed down, I think that would be very helpful. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with putting a few screws on a door. Right. I just don't right. see anything wrong with that. Right. Or so. even putting a brace in there. I, it wouldn't stop me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Item number 10, enhanced safety area, rock removal, black dirt. Uh, yeah, I can give you an update on that. Um, matter of fact, I think I sent that out as an email as you well. You did. Um, a while back. But Dave... Um, Dave recommended that we have volunteers that that walk and rock pick, and then he and, and if we mark the locations where there's some of the some of the you know the ruts, he could drop some black dirt and then take a, a drag and he'd do a he'd be able to drag and, and fill up the, the ruts. So so I think that and, and that would be you know fall work for him. So. I haven't walked that area at all. How's the grass coming out there? I mean, it's, it's coming, and it's starting to hide some of where the rocks were. I went in there with a shovel and picked one of them out. It's about this big around, and um, you almost have to dig it out. I mean, I was, I was maybe it's a little overkill, but <laughs> I wanted to get the rock out of there. I don't want to land on rocks. You know, I want to land on grass, and mm -hmm. we don't have enough black dirt out there. The overrun on the south end. I was chasing geese around there the other day. And you can't, it's so rough, you can't even drive a pickup in there. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. an overrun. That's there's right. There's no reason why that couldn't be leveled off in there. Right. right. I mean, right. there's deep ruts in there. That's ridiculous. Yep. And, well, isn't uh, that part of the contract? I don't know. We'll have to find out. But I, because uh, you got about 600 feet of overrun there in case anybody would need it. And I wouldn't want to go in there with an airplane. Yeah. Especially a nose gear airplane. Um, black dirt, um, we had that overrun, or Pat Hoverland's got that dirt alongside his hangar. There's a good two truckloads of dirt there. And we had, in our fly-in, we had an airplane that was stuck out in our low spot. Uh, that's, you think that dirt is usable, Sam? It should be, yeah. Spot? I mean, yeah, that's what they put on there to, for the topsoil. And, and there's a couple other hangars going to be built out there, too. There'll be more black dirt coming. And just put it's it in. not really black dirt. It's kind of a topsoil Top stuff. But, um, some's got rocks in it and some, but I, there's not a problem. There'd be, I'd have to say that uh, even the hangar we're going to be doing out there is going to be a couple of tandem loads. They're easy. Right. Because yeah. the, the dirt's about that thick. Yeah. Right. And it's all got to come out of the 4,200 square feet of it. Yeah. So there's uh, more than a couple of tandem loads there. David indicated that, you know, Correct. scheduling um, to schedule with him, and he'd, he'd make sure the dirt got moved over there. He'd Jeez. work with yeah, each person. I think that's what we should look at, just reusing that dirt to come out of those hangers because... Sure. I agree. That's where the... And then put it in that low spot? Is that what you're yes. saying, Sam? Yeah. Um, every, anywhere. Anywhere, the, the, anywhere we need us, it. That side area on the west side or that low area... Right in front of where the airplanes park there, that there should be something leveled off in there too. Exactly. You know, I saw that same thing right by the taxiway. That's too low there. That should have been well, leveled it's off. It's just rough. It just needs to be so the turf can go back in there. Well, let's get with Dave and uh, I suppose Pat. I get. I'll. You want to contact Dave? And let me know. Yeah, Dave. Dave was just waiting for a phone call. So I'll get with Pat then on it. Yeah, just organize with Pat or have Pat. Give Dave a call. I think I forwarded Dave's contact information. It'll probably be a month before I'd have any available orders. Well, the pile is sitting there now for oh, I know, the for pads, pads, so yeah, I know, right. we'll get rid of that. Yeah. Gas tank level, I did not look. I have been kind of watching yeah, it. We got it. One six and one zero. So it's close to 
quartering yep. time. And we do have our price advertised on Four Flight now, Rick. You we did do. That? Yep. I worked with Four Flight, and they were able to get us um, advertised on there for fuel price. Is that a cost to us at all? There or? was no cost. I was uh, surprised. I started looking at, at the services they have, and, and uh, anyhow, I made a call to them, and they, they got us on there. They didn't realize that they didn't have us listed as fuel at all, and that's why I called them. And then uh, they got it updated, and then Trina knows the password and login to update that when she updates avgas.com. Trina knows I haven't looked, but how are we compared price-wise? We are competitive. Trina. Yeah. We are real competitive. We're, do, we're doing well. We're starting to have people fly in and get gas here. Um, That'll change on the next load, I'm guaranteeing you. Oh, we're going to get bit from that, wow. from that hurricane. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, car gas, everything. I did discover that Four Flight is not updated with no TAMs, and I was towing the other day at, at Osceola, and uh, somebody was on the radio, and they were going to land at Belle Plaine. Well, Belle Plaine is no tammed right now to be closed because the person that owns it is going to sell it, and they, that person didn't know it, and sure enough, he said over me a radio, oh, it doesn't say that on Four Flight. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah. it doesn't give you everything. As long as we get the fuel price on Four Flight, Maybe we stand a chance of getting more revenue sales. Mm -hmm. I like the idea, and it doesn't cost anything. Holy right. cow! What's that guy, Joel Meter or something like that? He's Jim Joel Meter. Yeah. He won a. He was a Stitz distributor. Yeah. Okay. And we have others from the floor. Chad, I know you've got a plan that you want to present us. Chad, just for the record, I I think I have your name spelled correctly. Um, I just want to get it to you, and again, I just want to get it right. W A L K E R S. Okay. Hold on. Um, got to scroll down here. Okay, go ahead. W O L K E R S T O R F E R. Wolkersdorf Storfer. Okay, thank you. Chad. Chad, yeah. yeah <laughs> Chad, what lot are you on? Uh, number eight. And this is the same exact plan as Rod Skoog, I think is his mm -hmm. name. Um, the colors are yet to be de determined, but they're going to be probably a porous green and tan. So no, hot pink, no, no hot pink, then? No hot pink. Yeah, as long as you're down to two colors, too, that's... So okay. do you want it's, it's the exact plan? It is, yeah. What was, what was we're it? We're keeping dimension? everything the same. Way. What was the dimension oh, on it? Oh, sorry. Well, uh, what was the dimension on that plan? 60 by 60. Oh, yeah. The only change I'm making is that obviously there's not going to be room for a garage door in the back. So that will be eliminated. Yeah. And just put a silver stone in the back. Yeah, because you got the pond right behind you there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put maybe a deck off the back or a patio or something. Well, there's probably not much room for that. You know, as long as the overhangs are yeah. what we're asking for, the 18 yeah. and 12 inch, and the, no more than two colors, and that's, uh, you're thinking tan and green with yeah. it? How big something similar to yours. Yeah. How, how big is your overhead on there? Two foot. I know. I'm, um, how, the width of your over your big door. The big door? Yeah. I'm not even sure yet. Oh. It'll stay on there probably. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, it it, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. Yeah. No, it's going to be the same door. It's the only change. Forty-six by fifteen. Got it. So you got windows all the way around at service door here. You'll end up. So this is being eliminated because that's the back, and that's yeah. You know, that's like doing yeah. there, so. I, I know you got to check where that door's got to go. I know there's some issues there. The service door. The service door, the but distance. I mean it should be all approved already. It's got to be a diagonal. Same as, as yeah. rods. Yeah, right. It's just a distance from the front to the back, and there's a diagonal dimension. But chat will let you know that. Okay. So. Um, I'd make a motion to approve your plan. I mean, the same plan we just did in the past. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, make sure, Chad, that two things I do hook your sewer up first. Yeah. Get the hold of the plumber. Yeah. Right, right. Get a hold of the plumber to do your permit right away. Yeah, because that can take some time, right? That's going to take some time. And since it's a commercial building, you have to have stage lines for the. Plumbing. Yep. Yeah, but you can get started on the building now. That's not, that's yeah. not a problem. But usually you, you got the plans back by the time you got your building ready to go. Okay. Yeah, but you can still he can still hook up uh, to water oh, and absolutely. sewer without the plan. Absolutely, okay. just get it run into the building. Yeah, yeah, because 
I know Pat Hubberland had a heck of a time doing his. I mean, I think he's got about twenty thousand dollars invested in, in yeah, his I sewer water. Mistakes. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And you're up. Yeah, come on up to the podium if you would, please. This is Chris Olson. Yeah. How you doing? Hello. Uh, we, uh, let's see, my name's Chris Olson. I live over in Andover. Um, myself and about 12 other guys are all professional pilots. And uh, we've been using transient hangers and stuff all over the place. We thought this would be a great opportunity to come up here. You guys paved your runway and it's, it's pretty close to a bunch of us. So we have about five airplanes we'd like to stick somewhere. Uh, our initial plan was supposed to have my hangar and Chad's hangar, but there was some miscommunication and so Chad's building this hangar there. But it's, it's really okay because we found out from Rick that there's a bit of a parking problem if we had this many people on airplanes trying to get in and out there. So we'd still like to build a hangar on spot six, but uh, one question I had was if there would be any possibility if we could uh, try and uh, work something out where we could build on spot one, a commercial type hangar. Uh, I don't think it's being utilized and uh, we, we could use a pretty big hangar. We're gonna have several twins and uh, singles in there. How big a hangar are you looking to do? Uh, you know, we'd like to be at least 7,000 square feet, if not 10 or bigger. Okay. And uh, we, could, we could certainly write it in that if we were ever going to sell the hangar, you could have first rights to it. Now, when you go 7,000 square feet, I believe you got a sprinkler that, or, is, or are we exempt yep. from that? It's a ridiculous rule on a hangar, but uh, that's my understanding, too, anything over 5,000 square feet. It's just something you have to consider when you fear. I mean, it, it, we have a professional builder. We've built a lot of big buildings. Yeah. We had a 120,000 square foot warehouse in St. Cloud, so yeah. it's not... I mean, there's always possibilities. We could split it into two. We've talked about, you know, just building two hangers on that spot, doing the same thing. Um, we'd like to bring the business in. We, we do a lot of flying. We can easily get out. And if we have a transient hangar in Anoka, if we couldn't get back in with the weather, um, a lot, some of the guys do angel flights and things like that. We'd like to sort of uh, step that up a little bit and get a little more organized. It's not right now. We're just kind of all over the place. So we just thought it would be a good uh, opportunity, but like I said, with the parking problem in spot six, I don't know. I think we could get maybe two, three airplanes in. We have a couple of Barons, but I, I know we can't get a couple of twins in there. So mm -hmm. we'd be pulling stuff in and out all the time. It'd probably be <laughs> we don't want anybody mad at us over there. Well, yep. the, the biggest problem on, number, on site number one, there is no water or sewer there at all. So it would have to be brought in from where, back of the AD building, Sam? Um, is where it, 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 could, it could get a service run over there, though. One of the things that we talked about it earlier, there was another even further down where you probably have to extend the main, but that, that's not the case here. You, know, they, you could still get water and sewer in there. Is it, it is available right there. Yeah, it's just a shame. We, we talked to the... Uh, you know, skydive Twin Cities guys, because they're not really sure what they were doing, but I think they may come back. We don't know. I think they have a problem with the landing spot. might be an issue for them, but, uh, you know, it's their hangar, so they, they weren't sure. So we're just going to move press forward. We'd like to kind of get moving with this and get our airplanes moving. Me personally, over. I don't have a problem with what you're going to, what you're thinking about doing, that's for sure. Yeah. It'd be nice to have a building on that spot. Yeah, it would. And especially uh, a bigger building like that, too, because... You know, maybe do you ever consider doing any maintenance or anything in those? Yeah, we, we have guys that, uh, so the, one of the mechanics we worked with was a 20-year uh, Northwest Airlines mechanic, and now he's a Delta pilot. He's been there for 10 years. And so we do that. We do some, uh, we, we have guys that can do upholstery and airbrushing if you want tail flags, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. So we, we can do quite a bit of things. We'd, we'd like to get into some more options. Um, we've always got stuff going on. It's just, you know, we need space to do it. Can't. Well, I sure don't have a problem. I don't know about, oh. about anybody else, but I, if, you know, the, the, the problem is the MAC doesn't allow businesses part time. They only want businesses full time at MAC airports. Here, you want to do airbrushing ten hours a week. Hey, knock yourself out. You know, go right ahead. Yeah. Sounds like a great idea. Um, you, you don't have any plans yet or anything like no, that. No, because you we just weren't sure it was just it coming was, to ask about it. Yeah, because it was commissioned as a, you know something for the airport, and I wanted to run it by you before I had my plans guy yeah. drop. 
a massive. One thing. of the things I would suggest, you know, what you're, with your concept, you know, if sure. you get a time, is to talk with our building official. Yeah. And, and then great. just get together with him, tell him what you're thinking about doing, and then, and then uh, kind of go from there and see what you're up against there, you know. Yeah, but, I don't. I, we I built lots idea, of big buildings. I mean, if, I if think you guys the have the services, I think we could do it and make something that's really, you know, we'll, we'll have some, if we can get it big enough, we'll have some transient parking. If somebody is in a pinch and we could have some maintenance going on there and, you know, so if people wanted some stuff. But we have, like I said, there's quite a few of us that really have some interest in coming up mm -hmm. here. And um, you guys were just talking about, like, the young eagles and stuff like that. All of us, so we, I hate to sort of put us into a, into a spot here, but, um, we're supposed to be kind of a club, but structurally, tax-wise and insurance-wise, we're probably going to make it like a flight school. But to get into our flight school, you would have to probably have five, ten thousand hours because some of the airplanes we're bringing in aren't probably going to be, you know, beginners airplanes. So, <clears throat> but these guys are all really, you know, they're great guys. They'll always talk to you. They'll help you. Most of us have our instructor's licenses, so we mm -hmm. can do all that stuff. So, we just—I've been doing this since I was five years old. So it's time to get like a big hanger. We've got a couple of transient ones, but they're just not big enough to do what we want to do. How many, I guess, how many people are going to be in on partners on this? There's going to be an LLC? No, no, we'll, it'll be myself and another partner will hold the, the hangar. The, the other guys that come in as, I, I, like I said, kind of quote unquote as the club, they're going to come in. We'll have a couple of different airplanes and stuff in there. We're not going to have like crazy amounts of people owning hangars. That's just not a good business plan. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but it'll be myself and another business owner that'll come in and build a big commercial hangar. Or as big as we can get, I guess. Or as, I know. think the concept's great. I really do. Um, Aaron, is, is there any drawbacks with us putting a hangar or anything we got to know about putting a hangar up on that one? A personal hangar on lot one? Yeah, I mean, I think you originally you set it up as a commercial hangar, but that's your your construct, right? I mean, as an airport commission, and uh, yeah, it's, it's not you know nothing obligating you to do that. the The biggest difference on that is there is a different rental rate, you know, for that commercial versus the non-commercial lots, and you know, I have to kind of make a determination on that. Um, Sounds like they're talking about some business use, and so I don't know that it's far off the mark as far as that's concerned. I'm here too. Yeah. So, yeah. It's not. And then I think, you know, they're, the utility stuff, I mean, they just have to investigate all that and see if it works for them, you know. And you know, gentlemen, is this, uh, we need to take a vote on this or? No, I would say the one thing in the CIP, there's all along in the CIP, there had been a, a, a hangar facility, a city owned hangar facility that would be um, up on the commercial area where there's the public land side and the public air side. Um, so if, if, and the only spot left for that would be lot one. one. So if, if um, I'm not, so if, if we're not going to reserve lot one for that, then we should pull it off of the CIP. Well, I think we need to do that because I don't think the city's going to have the appetite to do it. I really don't. Uh, how about going where the tea hangers go? I mean, that property is still available. And you you could, there, there, there's no services. And it might be electric, but it's not. Well, you'd have to come across the street with them. You'd have to go across one of those lots because the sewer's in the back. The sewer and water's in the back. That could out cost the hangar. Yeah. I, I think for what they're thinking about doing, because... So it'd be just on the other side of the tarmac of the gas then, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So big deal if we can't park Young Eagles airplanes there anymore. That doesn't make any well, difference. Well, we'd the still be, we'd love to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not, that I'm, just, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just being facetious. I mean, we don't care that we can't yeah. park an airplane there. Put a hangar there. No, put a hangar there. We can wheel them around and open yeah. up the hangar, and you guys are welcome. And if that. you don't have to get another main through there, if you can hook up to the current water have, that's at the AD building. Do we have do. dimensions of lot one by chance? Um, the, it's big. I don't know the, what it is. The dimensions have been variable based on oh, how, many, how many years ago did Greg Herrick have an interest in lot one? Um, Three. There's been some drawings, uh, uh, maybe even more than that. But there's been some drawings I, I don't remember. I, I, think that could I think that could be a variable. I think it could change, too, if you yeah. needed to. No, I'm definitely not opposed to it. 
I think uh, at this point, what we, what do we need to do, Jim? Just the, hit. the concept. I love the concept. I think what uh, what I would do if I was this gentleman, I would just talk to our building official to find out what he's going to run, run up against with the square footage and that kind of thing. Otherwise, I think you, the sewer and water would be a doable and uh, see what you can fit on there. Yeah. You know, because you'd be paying by the square foot anyways, you know. Mm -hmm. That right, water main runs all the way down behind the arrival. Yeah, it runs, right? runs right to the end there, so yeah. it would just, right. yeah, without extending the main, you'd have to just run a little bit longer sewer line there. Yeah, that's Which big wouldn't big be an issue there. No. no. No big deal. It just has to be, what it, um, when Greg Herrick was looking at it, um, and because of the size of the building, it needed to be, what, six inch, Sam? Well, that was... Because of the water suppression? Yeah, if it's going to be a sprinkler system, but there's different types of systems, though, too. Right, right. So, uh... And then there was conversation by the airport commission back then that said that they, um, that, that it, it should just, the utilities there should be extended and, yes, I and serve that. some other potential hangars. Right, that we would run the line so that if we build out beyond that, then we would still have the line right there you know, the, to build you know, on. It'd be the water main more than anything, but that's done all the time on these systems, you know, that the sewer wouldn't be any different than what you're using for anything else. As long as it's within, you know. Right. 4 inch yards, sewer. it's not even, if there's not a lot of obstructions, I mean, you can run that stuff pretty easy. But that's really why you need to talk to Chad, though, because of some calculations in there, and then your engineer, too. Yeah. So they'll help you with that, too. Yeah. Right. So the picture that you've got up here, Aaron, it's on the south side of the AD building, it looks like. It's sewer and water. Yeah. You, You'd have to the the water. You'd have if that was the case, and you needed it for the sprinkler. You would have to extend it down. Mm -hmm. Can you see what we're looking at? Yeah, I can see that. And right where the arrow is, that's where we're talking about. So that would have to be run across the sidewalk. No big deal. Right, right to there. Yep, Aaron's got the mouse correct. But that's is that fifty feet? No, one hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty feet. That's a water main that you'd have it, to do the water main or just as... Well, oh, thank depends, you, Aaron. It all depends on what his requirement is for the... 150 the feet, there it is. You got it right. Well, the question that came up when Herrick was looking at it was to build it out as a water main so it could be used later on and not allow him just to connect up as a simple service, single service. Well, I think we definitely should consider being able to build out past that hangar. Oh, I, I think I so, mean, too. Yeah. Here we are. We got our tire runway and we're out of airport lots. You know, so. Mm -hmm. I, I, I go to a lot of small airports with my job. I fly for net jets. And usually just the creativity of the airport is what makes it successful. Just, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if you. There's always a way. Yeah, yeah we just got to get it done. Right now, you know, aviation is really kind of struggling and we need to get more people flying. So that's kind of why we all got together. It was starting to get it to be a struggle for us. I mean, for us to go rent a single engine airplane, I'm never, I'm never current. So. <laughs> So this is kind of the way to do it. We keep twins in there for the guys that are flying professionally right now. Well, definitely, I, I, yeah, I like the concept. I think you, you need to do some homework on your end as far as, you know, cost and what it would run you to put your building up and figure out if it's doable for you guys. But I think the concept is uh, definitely liked. Okay. So, so. And there may, there may be some... Well, I know there's a height restriction there, but uh, you, that's usually not a problem with the hangar, you know. Well, the hangars that are currently there can take a lot bigger I'm stuff playing, than yeah. I think. I mean, the, the airport's, the runway's really too short for anything that would be too any taller than what the restriction is anyways. Mm -hmm. you'd have to, yep. You're talking about some pretty big birds, too. Mm -hmm. I don't think you could get a Gulfstream in there or anything anyways. <coughs> okay. Anything else that we need to add? Any other questions? Uh, just do I need to uh, try and get a uh, just at least an, uh, like a letter of uh, something from Trina, I guess, like we did for Hangar Six, just a yeah, at least a letter of intent. So, I'm, how do you want to operate? Do that one? I think you you can work with Trina and I, and I think we understand that the commission's supportive of you know getting a lease set up and. You know, working through the plans and yeah. so no, I think I think 
probably what you need. We're, you know, pretty informal. As long as we at least got it tied up for now, so if I go do all this work. Oh, yeah. Um, you know. I think there's a, yeah, you have to indicate interest, and then you get so many days to pull the trigger. You get 90 days from what, yeah. Trina, that's what happened with Chad. They sent us one letter, and we thought it was for both hangers. Mm -hmm. And then oh. <laughs> when we found out that one was gone, I'm like, oh. But then, like I said, we, we found out there's no parking, and there's some other issues there. But even if we had two hangers, and we put all those airplanes in there, if we pulled all the airplanes out, Whoever else is in that row is going to be a little miffed because we're going to have airplanes all over the place. So that's not probably a good spot for us. It's not the end of the world, though, because I mean, you know, we, we do have the looped yeah. systems you can get around there. It's, I, I understand what you're talking about, but uh, that was a good thing about the way it's set up there. So yeah, I'll, I'll work with Trina on getting you what you need as far as okay. getting the lot tied down or whatever. Yeah, and then we'll just figure out maybe what the sizes are. Just give me some dimensions and then we'll figure it out from there. Like it was indicated, the dimensions are pretty flexible. So I think oh. you need to just develop your plan around the general idea of where this lot is here. Okay. And then, you know, we'll ultimately finalize the square footage based on what the, these commercial lots are a little more flexible. So. Yeah, number three is my buddy's hanger over there. Pretty decent hanger, we like that one. Just a, one point of reference, um, and this just came back to me, um, the width of it was, well, what I remember is MnDOT Aeronautics having some problems with the hanger being right off the end of Alpha 2, um, and not, well, with, with the Herrick hanger and the size, the MnDOT Aeronautics was having trouble with it being right off the end of Alpha 2 as you turn to Bravo. But again, we need to find out what your specs are before we see if that's a problem. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good big spot. Just right. I mean, understand. So just bringing up a piece of past information. And possibly you might be able to pull the hanger back a little bit further to get whatever clearance we need there on that corner, I would think. Most they, likely. Yeah. Well, it drops off pretty fast there, too. So, you know, at least in the one corner it would. I'm glad somebody's thinking about doing something there. I really am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate your interest. It. Thank you. Anybody else from Fuller? Ron, you have anything? Jim? Hello. Um, I had just a little bit of time to talk with uh, Mr. Ashbach just prior to the meeting tonight. Uh, I didn't really plan to come here, and unfortunately I had to step out for a couple minutes. So if some of this is recapped uh, that I missed, I apologize. Um, anyway, we uh, mentioned a couple things. Um, I'm glad to see that there's an interest of continuing to improve the enhanced safety area that's on the west side of the runway. That's good. I'm still having some troubles out there and there's certainly ruts. I'm glad it's being talked about, filled and such. Um, with Mr. Ashbach I talked about, um, perhaps I can help uh, mark some of the low spots with some flags or something. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm glad that there's still attention being paid to that as, as well as the type of uh, turf that's out there. Some of it is kind of like Velcro to the equipment that I'm using and uh, that's not what I want. So uh, I'm glad that's still being considered anyway. Um, <clears throat> uh, some uh, I, I wanted to pass along uh, uh, to the city um, and thanks a uh, couple of the guys um, have been doing some of the work on the hangar out there um, and uh, the, the doors are looking much better Doug and Tim have done a great amount of work um, repairing doors and getting doors in place anyway I just wanted to uh, say that publicly thanks to those guys they've done a lot of help for me as well um, <clears throat> there's uh, still some work to be done on a door I know Ron's is still broken at the bottom and uh, there's some hardware still needs to go on and some of the doors that are existing still need some more brackets and screws um, up by the uh, roof where the roof meets the west wall um, there's they had uh, put in some roofing on there. However, the, the trim pieces around were just uh, 10 or 20% of the screws have been put in. So it's the, the uh, much of the metal is up there, but it's not yet complete. 
And then also they have uh, the opaque uh, windows or roof panels still need to be worked on there as well. So there is still work out there, but um, a, a bunch has been done uh, through the efforts of uh, I went out Coming there and down. looked at those opaque panels. They just need to be replaced. Yep. Is that right? You just, yeah. uh, you just need to go to Menards. Grind out or pull the heads out or whatever. Right. Climb up there, pop in new panels. Yep. So anyway, that's uh, coming along. Glad to see it being done. Um, uh, also, um, on the, the ramp, uh, Mr. Ashback and I spoke briefly about that, and, they, and he just before the meeting we talked, so he hasn't had time, I'm sure, to do anything or communicate anything. Anyway, uh, um, there uh, was a place where uh, the water runs under that ramp. Um, the Off to the side of that, part of that is washing out a little bit, and so we need to get gravel or something to stabilize that in there as well. Um, so that's a project. If if it were ever an opportunity to put some uh, tailings or uh, you know what they grind off an of an old paved, road so that can be a little bit better than gravel but not necessarily spending the expense of pavement that would be great um, anybody taxiing up there uh, creates quite a dust storm um, if you have a nose uh, tricycle gear type airplane um, there's you're still pretty close to the rocks and things in there but um, so anyway um, off to the side here where the culvert is on the east side of that little ramp um, stabilization needs to occur soon sooner rather than later and if you get a chance to get some tailings on there that'd be just great uh, I think that's it thank you thank you Jim any other orders of uh, business at all yeah I want to address this rent thing on our contract we need something done about it I, I wrote up something I'll read it to everybody here's copies of it our rent on our hangers is specific in number four the attorney seems to think that it doesn't say nine cents per square foot he thinks that it isn't part of a square footage it is that's what we're paying rent for and it's payable it says also that uh, it should be adjusted according to the consumers price index urban consumers Minneapolis St. Paul we neglected to do that for six years, but we raised it to 11 cents, which was more than the total amount for over the past when the leases were, were done. Rick Ashback introduced a capital replacement plan to pay for part of the running paving project. The formula for this capital repayment plan was to charge each lot tenant $280 every year for 10 years. That's already gone by the wayside. The 10 years is not in there. Rick Ashback, by his own admission, had the contract professionally reviewed by an attorney group. That attorney group concluded there was no such language in the airport ground lease to charge hangar lot owners for paving runway. Rick Ashback shared that information with me. I advised Rick not to present this proposal. Rick informed me that not to worry about it as the city wouldn't be able to collect the money anyway. This, that's just wrong. And nobody will bring up and say that it's wrong and do what's right. The extra charges contained within the city ordinance 644 are not rent. There are charges to pay for part of the runway pavement project. Aaron Parrish cannot simply relabel expenses at the airport and declare them to be rent. The extra charges contained in city ordinance 654 to pay for part of the runway paving project are outside of the ground lease contract and therefore a contract violation. Since the airport commission is an advisory body, it is our duty to properly advise the city of Forest Lake to honor their contracts. Because of that fact, I make the following motion. I move that we recommend to the city council of Forest Lake that the capital replacement charges contained within city ordinance 654 are a contract violation and they should be rescinded as soon as possible. Fees already paid in 2016 and 17 should be credited to to our towards our counts for each lot tenant i'll second it can i have that to type it into the minutes please can you get a copy i got just one sheet i just got There's one sheet on the back side of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do you want discussion? Have discussion on it? Anybody? Uh, Mr. Chair. Hold on. I, I got the following motion, but I don't have I don't have it in writing yet. It's still not on this sheet. There, there it is. There we go. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I got it. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Rick. No, I'm waiting for you to. Capital. The motion is that we approve uh, the airport commission uh, recommend to the city council of Forest Lake that the capital repayment charges contained within the city ordinance 654 are a contract violation. And this should be rescinded as soon as possible. The fees already paid in 2016 and 2017 should be credited toward accounts for each hangar lot tenant. Uh, the motion is by Mr. Ship and seconded by Mr. Husnick. Rick. Well, as I've said in the past, I have had, I did have my lease reviewed by an attorney and it was for my own purpose because I'm an interested party in that I'm a, a lease holder and I wanted to understand my lease. I did share that, I did share with Don Ship that I had talked to an attorney, but I will not admit, I did not state to him the sentence that he has in his document of not to worry about it. That is just not true. I'm a leaseholder and I wanted to protect my interest and I did, and that's what I did with my attorney. So, thank you. You also said that they wouldn't pay the runway unless we did this. What I got to worry about. Gen I, gentlemen, we're not gonna go there again. I don't believe that's what I said. But it was very clear that the council had a motion in December of 015, I believe it is, that said that if we wanted the project to move forward, there had to be a, a participation in the city share of the total project cost. Okay. Sam, do you have anything you want to put in? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Okay. It's two to two. The I, motion is I good. support the project. I've supported the project from day one. So. Any others from the floor? I will make a motion to adjourn um, the meeting. Mr. Chair, I do, I do have some things if I okay. could. Um, first of all, could you hand those down? Yeah. Um, this is a printout of what I emailed all of you on Saturday. Um, uh, Rachel is going to be out on maternity leave. Maybe she is already, but she wanted to get airport directory information sooner than in past years. Um, I had um, recommended the following changes to the airport directory. Um, number one, the city website. I, it's my understanding the city is moving to cityofforcelake.com, Aaron? for a website address? Or? They'll all work, but that's kind of our preferred one okay. at this point. Um, and I was gonna, as it relates to Skydive um, Twin Cities, I had sent an email to John um, asking if they were gonna resume operations, and he said they're still considering, but they, you know, but they haven't ruled it out. They're still considering it, but the recommendation that I wanted to bring to all of you was that until they resume operations that we should remove the, the parachute um, we should remove the things that, that talk about parachute jumping operations. I, I did notice that I, I had said to remove Skydive Twin Cities from the businesses. Um, I, that could remain, but I think it's important that the Skydive, the parachute operations be removed, and that can always be notumed if we need to, you know, if, if they come back and, and start jumping at Forest Lake again. Um, Rachel made a great recommendation that says if there's a lot of food places, just just report. Um, and I was going to replace all the individual food restaurants with 
many full service and fast service restaurants within two to five miles. Again, I was recommending that we remove reference to parachute operations until such time that Skydive um, Forest Lake or another organization comes in. Um, and then there were some construction the, the, on the back side. There was uh, references to the uh, taxiway lighting construction uh, and construction, and the uh, um, well. I was only going to. I was recommending we only keep the first note that says pilot control lighting CAF FD for details and remove the parachute jumping, remove the construction, and. Uh, remove the C, A, slash FD and NOTAMs for information about operational lighting. Obviously, uh, it's, uh, well, are there changes or other other things that you think should be done instead or, or uh, in, in addition? I think that looks good. Um, now, this is one thing. As far as the skydive uh, on a map, that happens in, what, February? This is separate from that? Um, this information on the sectionals. On the sectionals, I believe that's June. Is it June? Mm -hmm. So that's totally separate from this. Correct. Yeah, this is strictly the MnDOT Aeronautics Airport Directory. Is Banner towing listed? What's that? Is Banner towing listed? Yes. No, it, it's not. What's listed is Big Aerial Sign Services. <laughs> Do you want Banner towing listed? Oh, my mistake. I thought you were talking about businesses. You're talking about comments. Yes, that's what he's talking about. Okay. Yeah. Banner towing. Banner towing and, com and comments. Okay. Thank you. So I, I, I'm going to recommend that we keep the skydive Twin Cities. Um, they still do have an active website, but they push them either to Baldwin and, and uh, Winstead. But to keep that under the businesses, to add enterprise rental car, change to many full service and fast service restaurants within two and a half miles, remove references to parachute operations, and we can just note them that when they come back and then get them in the next airport directory, keep the pilot controlled lighting um, line and remove the others on the back side. Please let me know if you're okay with that and then I can finish this off with MnDOT Aeronautics or other changes. Sam, anything you'd like to see changed? Hmm. Are, they, are they paying co commercial rates there? Pardon? Are they paying commercial rates on that hangar? The skydive. Sky yes. At this point in time. Yes. They have a contract and, and the contract has the commercial rates. What a shame. I disagree because it's it's a hangar that allows for both a, a public well, then, land side and air side. Well, then you should be paying commercial rates. I don't have a public land side that, access. That has for, nothing to for, do with it. You got no, it's, it, I'm now. sorry, Sam. It does Same have a lot to do with it. Baloney. It, it does. I mean, their hangar has access to the general public 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, and you don't so have to be authorized to come in to use the hangar. So you're using our taxiways to access your hangar for your business. Just That's like, exactly what you're doing. And and you authorized that as one of the airport commission members. Uh, and I'm when sorry you we did because it turned into a can of Well, I am sorry that you did too because it would have been a lot easier okay. had it not been approved. That's right. But, okay. but you also have to realize that it was for our use only and we couldn't sell out of that hangar, and we couldn't use more than a, a certain percentage of that hangar. So there were several controls well, that were established. It's just that. an unfair deal. I mean, these guys are right now, they just have their hangar sitting there. There's several people that have businesses in their hangars, so. Okay, any other issues? Um, yeah, and a couple of them shouldn't be having businesses in there because they have nothing to do with aeronautics. Well, Absolutely nothing. And, and uses that have nothing to do with aeronautics. Okay, so I have some other items. If everybody's okay with the airport directory, Item 5010, the report, I was asked by MnDOT Aeronautics how we're coming with um, the items that were on the 5010 um, inspection letter. I wanted to bring that forward and, excuse me, I just need to get the right document here. Um, I reported that um, in an email to Kelly, 
at MnDOT Aeronautics. Um, she wanted to understand the power line poles that were brought up in the 5010 that need to be lit, and, uh, and that's in the CIP for 2019. She asked about the tie downs not being accessible. I reported that the, um, after the bio logs had been removed, um, that, that, and, and the grass started getting established, that it has been more accessible. And people have been tying down quite a bit this year here, much more so than in the past few years. Um, they asked about the drop off along the runway, um, and that, of course, was corrected by SCH and the contractor so that there's no more than an inch and a half to two inch drop off along the runway edge of the blacktop. Um, they asked about the non-frangible bases for Pappy and real lights, and I had indicated that the contractor has properly installed those. Um, and they asked about the duct covers that were not buried on the ground, the, those have been done. And then they asked about the vehicles using taxiways to access hangars. Um, and, and I said I'd bring that forward to the September Airport Commission meeting, which I'm bringing up now. So while they were out there inspecting the airport for the 5010, and I think there was a couple other times that it was happening, they saw a lot of vehicle traffic on the taxiway. And from the north to the south end. From the north to the south or south to the north. So is there anything that the Airport Commission wants to implement or work through as it relates to that? First of all, where's that traffic coming and going to? Is it uh, hangar, uh, hangar users on the north end coming down? Do we? I have no idea. Know? They just reported that there's a lot of vehicle traffic on the taxiway, which. Because I really, I mean, I haven't seen a lot of that traffic on. I, mean, the, I, I, I drive it. Sam? I, I drive it with four ways just to inspect the runway once in a while while I'm there, not the runway, the taxiway, um, and then uh, very rarely do I go on the runway. Um, I know others have gone there. Tim, I think you go and, and check and I, them. I go and Sam, you, you go and inspect that. Yeah, you know. carry radio. And I, I guess, you know, I really haven't seen that much traffic. In fact, I can't remember the last time I actually saw somebody other than uh, Jim with his band towing stuff, banner towing stuff. And my thing about chasing geese around, I'd rather chase a goose off the damn runway and have somebody run into it with an airplane. Right. And that's exactly what's happening so, there. So, and I carry a radio. I'll, uh, a lot of times the weather's really crummy anyways. Nobody's flying in there anyways. If everybody's so. okay, I'll just report that there is um, several airport commission members and local pilots that do check to make sure that that everything is in good order and and that we don't accept, you know, um, public traffic. We need to add on the notams that there's uh, goose depredation activities being conducted at the airport. I do have a note for the geese, but I can say different. Yeah, but the activity is going to ha happen. What's that, Sam? It's going to take some activity. There's going to be some activity going on at the airport there. Okay. Um, as a board, um, you might consider uh, simply a, a notice to the folks on the, on the board end. Well, in fact, all airport users, um, if they're going to be on the taxiway, um, if it is acceptable, um, to have a, a yellow flashing light or flashes on their car when traveling along there, and perhaps a handheld transceiver it's, it's, um, to it's, help with communications. Um, you might you know, just provide that as an informational notice to, to members of the airport. Most of us, I think, already do, like Sam was saying, he carries a radio. Um, but that, I, I, that generally help, speaking, uh, Satisfied MnDOT's concerns. I doubt it. I, I don't think you want it to open it up that much. I really don't. I, I, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, I, I did ask Dave. I worked with Lindsay at SEH and Dave Adams to order some taxiway reflectors because I've seen a few of those get knocked down and not replaced. I did notice that the runway light that was damaged has, has been replaced. Um, I talked to Lindsay via text message about Pappies, and um, she said they haven't been certified yet, but they've ordered, MnDOT has ordered baffles for the Pappies to, they're kind of like blinders so, to help with, the, it was recommended by the FAA that they get some baffles on there, so those are on order, but they've not been certified yet. Um, 
and then I was um, contacted by a company. I don't know the company's name or the gentleman off the top of my head. He was going to send an email um, a week ago, and he hasn't done that yet. Um, but there's a, um, a company that uses Davis Weather Systems, and they add some other equipment to it so that pilots can use four clicks on their comm radio to activate a weather advisory, not a weather, um, it's just strictly advisory. Um, and he was going to send an email, and I'll, I'll forward that email on to you guys when I get it. So just a service for weather advisory that doesn't have all the expense associated to it for a certified AWAS system. That's it. That's it. Okay. No other business. I would make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 725. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for showing up and your input. John, I want to talk to you when you get a chance. Yes, sir.